Welcome to the Love and Lattes podcast, a coffee lover's guide to good vibes, books, rom-coms, and everything in between. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for all things romance. Now grab some coffee and let's get chatting. Hey everyone, thank you for listening and joining today. So I am going to be doing a quick review of the Groomsmen First Look, which is the first installment in the Groomsmen trilogy airing exclusively on Hallmark+. Plus. So the Groomsmen First Look just premiered on October 17th, so a few days ago. And let's just get right into it. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you are a fan of all things romance. And let me know in the comments what you thought of the first movie. I would love to hear what you all think. So I just want to start off by saying I read a lot of romance novels written in dual POV, and those are really popular. If you're a romance reader, you know all about that. And I think it's really interesting as a female reader to get like inside the head of the guy. And, you know, you're just curious, what are they thinking in this moment? Because as a female, you're you're like, you can relate maybe to what the female main character is going through, but you're always wondering, what about the guy? Does the male main character feel the same electricity as the female main character does? Is it one-sided? Well, with the Groomsman trilogy, you kind of, I feel like it's Hallmark's version of male POV chapters in a romance novel. Maybe that's a weird way to look at it, but that's kind of instantly what I thought of when I watched this movie and heard about the films. Anyway, <laughs> I think one of the actors, I forget which actor said this, but he referred to like the Groomsman trilogy as kind of like Sex in the City, but for Hallmark audiences, which is interesting. I haven't seen Sex in the City, but of course it's obviously incredibly popular. But I'm curious, did anyone find any comparisons to the show? But these are kind of like the male version of the Wedding Veil trilogy. But okay, so first off, I really loved the instant meet cute. Like right off the bat, you see these two characters, Pete and Chelsea instantly fall for each other and it's that trope of insta love which is a nice alternative if you're a fan of like maybe a slow burn or enemies to lovers instantly you're like okay these two characters really like each other and they don't even know each other but there's like that instant spark i did think it was kind of weird for me as a viewer to hear tyler being called dad um he seems like an ambiguously aged 30 something year old um, the dance was something I think everyone was excited to see, which, I mean, a great, great song choice with Shake Your Groove thing, throwing it back to the 1970s. It did not disappoint. It was uh, entertaining, to say the least. I think all three actors were really enjoying the dance. <laughs> One thing I really liked was when Chelsea and Pete decided to dance together away from the crowd. It thought it was a really intimate kind of moment and view of their relationship to be kind of different from maybe being showy. It was more just like for them, which the wedding ended up being kind of like that as well. It wasn't a big hoopla, if you will. <laughs> Their wedding was a smaller, more intimate wedding. So I think that's kind of interesting, just like reflective of their relationship and their journey as a couple. I thought that this movie overall was pretty like accurate as far as relationships go, maybe like long distance relationships. I did like when Pete and Chelsea acknowledged that they wanted to keep in touch, but they probably wouldn't. I thought the moment was actually kind of realistic and not over-romanticized. Um, I like that they just like sat there quietly eating, basking in the reality that long-distance relationships are hard, and um, they didn't want to start something they probably wouldn't be able to finish. Um, and then just kind of going off of that, I thought Heather Hemmons and BJ Britt had really great chemistry. Just right off the bat, you could definitely feel the sparks and just like a friendship, but also love there. Um, definitely the possibility for that, which obviously bloomed throughout the movie. BJ played Pete in a way that I thought was different than we normally see. He was vulnerable and he was endearing and he was nervous about the whole thing. And we don't often see that from the guy character. I really liked his portrayal of Pete. Um, it was quite refreshing. I thought he did a really great job when they started texting and calling for the first time. You just could tell that they were both like really giddy about getting to know each other and just kind of talk to each other through text. I thought the movie did a really good job on that kind of just the initial excitement of getting to know someone for the first time. Um, just a couple of side notes. Chelsea said she likes to watch baking shows, but she doesn't actually bake. 
I did not know anyone else felt that way. I feel that way completely. Uh, Spring Baking Championship and then the Christmas Cookie Challenge. Those are so fun to watch. And I have never baked a cake in my entire life. So it's funny that uh, someone else obviously feels that same way. The camping trip was also hilarious. I thought Jonathan did a really great job. He was so funny throughout this whole movie. He was very energetic. I think he had his his caffeine um, before filming started. Uh, he was very fun to watch, and I'm very excited to see his movie that like focuses on his romantic journey. Another person that was really funny was Pete's mom. She was very different than Chelsea's parents, obviously. You had to have that contradiction there. Um, she was such a funny free spirit, and I don't know who the actress is, but she did a great job. And then kind of just like at the wedding, it was kind of reflective of the beginning where they had the impromptu dance privately. The wedding was so fun how it just like they everyone was so there was so much pressure on the wedding and everyone was kind of getting, you know, worked up and nervous and anxious and overwhelmed by it all. And so I thought that the wedding, how it happened, they just said their vows like spontaneously and it was perfect. And so basically, the movie is about two people who don't really know each other, feeling a strong connection and just like exploring where that goes and finding a way to make things work despite obstacles like, you know, living 3,000 miles apart and having very different families and trying to connect despite these differences. Um, They made it work. And so I thought that was a really great message. So true love is worth the fight, right? That's the message, I think. Be on the lookout for the next installment of the Groomsman trilogy. I believe it's the Groomsman Second Chances, with which is Jonathan Bennett's movie. So yeah, uh, let me know what you thought about this movie in the comments. If you made it through this entire review, thank you. I feel like I rambled the entire time. Thanks for listening to it. Um, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and thanks for listening to the Love and Lattes podcast. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you're watching this on YouTube. If you are listening to this, don't forget to leave a review or rating on the podcast. I would really, really appreciate it. It kind of helps get the word out there so more people can hear these interviews and just discover more information about these amazing authors and actors and screenwriters, everyone who's been on the podcast. I really appreciate your support and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening. Bye.